Ja? ja? Gut? But the good thing is uh, that it's that it's not a guarantee that it's going to be grey until the end of the day. So hopefully the sun will come out again today. Um, uh, so yeah, we're in the northern part of the island right now, and we're going to do a little round tour and maybe later on also go and visit some of the gutas. So we're going to visit some cave-like formations in the central part of the island uh, formed through uh, vol uh, volcanoes. And yeah, looking forward to it.
The interior of Tessaira is primarily home to over 50,000 cattle. The lush green landscape is attractive, but compared to other Azores islands, it is rather lacking in intoxicating sceneries. On the other hand, with the Algado Calvao cave and the Gruta do Natal, Tessaira has a few volcanic highlights that we didn't want to miss. The small mountain lake Lagoa do Negro is located near the 622 meter high Pico Gordo. Right next to it we found the entrance to the Gruta do Natal. It is a tunnel-like grotto, strictly speaking of a lava tube. Every year a mass is held in it on Christmas Day. Sometimes baptisms and even weddings take place in the cave. So we are in the Gruta uh, do Natal here, the Christmas cave. This is actually a lava tube that formed uh, um, of a volcano one kilometer away from here that at one point collapsed and this is where the lava flow um, went through. Yeah, so it's a whole cave system and for safety reasons you have to wear a hat in case something comes down because there's also stalactites here. So let's go have a look. Nicht dein Ding, findest du es nicht interessant? Schon, aber ich bin überhaupt nicht gerne unter der Erde, muss ich sagen. Ich bin lieber auf der Sonnenseite des Lebens. So, hier darf man gar nicht lang Nee, aber hier kannst du nur Lüscher. This cave was probably formed by lavas of the eruption of Pico Gaspar 12,000 years ago. Such caves form when a lava flow cools and solidifies only on its surface creating an insulating mantle around the lava flowing below. If at some point the activity of the volcano subsides and the lava flow subsides, such tubes remain. So this type of lava flow has a continuous smooth and slightly wavy structure. It's uh, known uh, as large, lagiros, that's what they call it here. Like a little bit of a spongy appearance. Yeah, 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 this is very narrow. Whoa. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this lava tube has 697 meters of extension and is quite easy to walk inside. On December 25th, 1969, the first mass was organized inside the cave. Since then, it's known as Christmas Cave, Gruta do Natal. So this is getting really, really low now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my goodness. Oh, I'm crawling now. Oh. 
Located in the south sector of the majestic Pico Alto volcano, you find the Fauna Stolen Sofre, a field of humor rolls, or in other words, an area with several shafts that let out aggressive volcanic gases at various temperatures, some of which are quite high, about 95 degrees Celsius on the surface and about 130 degrees Celsius, 50 centimeters below the surface. The gases released are essentially a mixture of carbon dioxide, nitrogen, methane and other substances in very low percentages. Funas Dong Sofre are thus an example of secondary volcanism, located in an intersection of various geological faults. In some cases, these faults are very deep, even several kilometers, and long a characteristic related to the origin and evolution of Tessaira as an island. As a consequence of the hot and chemically aggressive degassing, the surrounding rocks have changed and continue changing into clay materials related to secondary minerals such as sulfur in crystals, which is the yellowish color, iron oxides, which is the reddish color, and aluminum oxides, which are whitish. Our next visit was also a bit wet chill experience as we descended 90 meters into the Algadu Cavao cave, which is more than 2000 years old and lies at about 550 meters above sea level. Like on Graciosa, you climb into the vent of an extinct volcano. Sunlight enters through the chimney, which is 45 meters high and gives the scenery something very special. The walls of the cave, which has a diameter of up to 45 meters, are pitch black in places, giving it the name Algaru Caval, coal mine. The cave is also home to a species of spider that is found nowhere else in the world. Stalagmites and stalactites are formed by silic acid deposits. The milky white stalactites with internal reddish veins cover a large area of the roof and walls of the volcanic pit and can reach about 1 meter in length and 40 to 50 centimeters in diameter. The Algado Cavao volcanic pit ends in a lake of crystal clear water around 80 meters deep in relation to the uppermost part of the pit. In a sheltered bay at the foot of Monte Brasil between the fortresses of São Sebastião and São João Batista lies Angra do Heroismo, a magnificent Renaissance city and not for nothing a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Safe sheltered ports are rare in the Azores and since Angra has one of the best natural anchorages, a few houses sheltered by Monte Brasil soon became a town. Ships brought plagues and epidemics to the town as a result of their voyages between Portugal, Africa and America, but also prosperity. Supplying ships made Angra the first service center in the Azores. Trade and handicrafts flourished, while on all other islands only agriculture brought income.
six decades of Spanish rule turned the village into a city. The Renaissance stronghold of the Azores owes its linear floor plan and almost 80% of the historically valuable buildings to the Spanish rule. Strolling through Angra streets, you will pass palaces, mansions, monasteries, churches and beautiful public gardens rebuilt after the massive 1980 earthquake that damaged 65% of the buildings. Na, da passt du ja perfekt rein, Elia. Es gibt verschiedene Rosensorten, es gibt, guck mal. Mmh. Rosen? Harte Rosen. In 1983, Angra do Heroismo was declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. Today, the port city is one of the three administrative centers of the autonomous region of the Azores, along with Ponta Delgada on São Miguel and Horta on Fayal. Tessaira and now uh, ah, hopefully 12 days maybe maybe a bit more straight to France keep fingers crossed it's gonna be a good passage bye bye Azores Islands The Azores archipelago is of volcanic origin and the islands correspond to elevations of the ocean floor due to the accumulation of volcanic products. The archipelago is located in a very active seismic and volcanic area that corresponds to the junctions of three major tectonic plates. the Eurasian, North American and African plates. Since its settlement in the 15th century, 26 volcanic eruptions took place in the Azores region, 14 of them submarine. And we were lucky enough to witness several sublime volcanic legacies on seven of the nine Azorean islands we visited within four weeks. That was quite an agenda before our last ocean crossing from Tessaira back to the French coast. One of the hardest passages of all we've done so far.